Hey guys, what's up, what's going on? My name is Rob and welcome back once again to the channel. Inside today's video, we're gonna be talking all about Canadian dividend stocks. So dividend stocks really are, in my opinion, perfect for beginners. And as somebody like myself who worked in retail for the past decade or so, um, you know, the idea of earning passive income on the side by investing in the stock market was really attractive to me. And that's basically, you know, what got me into the stock market and investing in the first place. And I know we get a lot of new people on this channel, so just in case if you guys are new, dividend stocks are basically companies or businesses um, that do their business, and if you invest into them, they'll pay you money on a regular basis, whether it be monthly or quarterly or whatever it is. And dividend investing is really one of the more safer, conser conservative ways um, to invest your money. And a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people who think about the stock market, they think of it you know, as gambling or kind of investing into penny stocks or investing into these small little stocks that can grow over time. And you know, dividend stocks are just a cool little alternative for people like myself who want to take a more um, simple, more basic approach and just kind of, I shouldn't say guarantee, but you, know, you can rely on the fact that you'll be earning money uh, passively and your stocks will generally grow over time. And when it comes to investing, I think dividend stocks are one of the smartest ways um, to actually invest. And I think it is one of the best ways for beginners to get started. And if you guys have been following my channel, you know that um, it's really easy for beginners to get started with dividend stocks. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my best performing dividend stocks. I'm going to show you guys how I've been able to able to earn passive income with Wealth Simple Trade by buying dividend stocks. And I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to get started, even if you're a complete beginner. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor and smash the like button. It really helps out. And I'll put all my affiliate links in the description of this video as well if you guys want to check that out. All right, guys. So really quickly here, before we jump in and talk about some of my best performing stocks, um, I'll give you guys a quick little update on my two accounts that I've started in, on inside um, with these videos. And that'll be my TFSA and then that'll be my personal account. We just started a brand new personal account because we're on our way to maxing our TFSA. I'm just kind of finishing up the calculations and whatnot, but we'll still keep the account going and I'll still document it so you guys can see. So our main account here with the TFSA, we have $29,000 and over the past day, we are up $36 um, since this morning. Over the past week, the portfolio is up, I guess, negative 0%, which would be of negative $72. Over the past month, we're up 3%, which is almost $1,000. Over the past three months, we're up 8%, which is $2,293. And then over the past year, we're up 14% inside the portfolio. So lots of gain coming over the past year, specifically over the past couple months. 2021 has been really good to our portfolio. As we kind of predicted, you know, we bought a lot of stocks during the dip last year, and it's just kind of been growing over time. And our all-time performance on this TFSA, since we first started investing in January of 2020, um, to uh, April 2021, which is today, um, is 3,378, which is plus 13%. And that's once again, with our dividends being reinvested in that money growing and us on a regular basis, putting money back inside the portfolio. And now we're gonna talk about our personal account. So the personal account is the account we just started. Now the funny thing about the personal account is when it comes to Wealth Simple Trade, when you put in new cash deposits, um, it takes a couple days for the cash deposits to register. So sometimes the um, reporting in your account can be a little bit higher because sometimes Wealth Simple will count it as a percentage gain. So you'll see with this count, it says we are actually up 14%, which is $98. That's not actually true. If we zoom down a little bit, our $800 that we have inside our personal account, you guys can see we have $220 to trade um, and our actual account is actually down a little bit. We have TD, which is down, um, I guess, almost 0.58% and VD, VDY, which is down 8%. But once again, Wealth Simple Trade is counting these new deposits that aren't quite um, gone through yet as a gain. So um, this portfolio looks like it's up, but it's actually down quite a bit. So I just want to point that out there if you guys are using Wealth Simple Trade. Sometimes this can happen with your accounts. But overall, uh, like I said, our two accounts are doing pretty good and they're slowly growing over time. All right, guys. So in today's video, I'm going to focus on the best performing stocks inside my um, TFSA, which is our biggest account. And like I said, most of these are Canadian dividend-based stocks with a little bit of U.S. stocks, growth stocks kind of sprinkled in here. The U.S. fund that I am using is a VFE here. It's the S&P 500. That's the only U.S. fund inside this account. Um, and it's been doing pretty well. And it's basically the main ETF. We're, we're picking two ETFs with this portfolio, VDY being a high um, Canadian high dividend yield ETF, which we have 214 shares up 12%, which is really good. It's going to be one of the ones we're talking about. Um, we're actually going to talk about that one first. And then we have VFE, which is a U.S. fund, which I think every investor should have some type of U.S. funds, even if you're a Canadian investor, um, because they just do really well long term. So uh, focusing on the Canadian stocks, let's start off with the VDY. So VDY is the main ETF here. Um, over the past year, the ETF has recovered quite well since the pandemic, up 41%. And over the past five years, it is up 20%. So once again, the dip kind of hurt it a little bit, but it has recovered quite well.
well and it still continues to grow it is a monthly dividend stock so it does pay you monthly dividend income and it does hold some of the best companies in canada holds a lot of the big banks a lot of financials holds some energy like a lot of the staple stocks that people think about when it comes to dividend canadian dividend based stocks and growth stocks basically are inside this fund and you can lock it up you can look up the holdings i think it's one of the best canadian funds but there's a lot of different ones out there and a lot of you guys recommend different etfs in the comments you know most of them are pretty good just make sure they're good quality companies and make sure the fund is managed in a, in a very sustainable way um, so that there's growth going into long term but vdy has been pretty good for us we've been buying it since day one inside the stock portfolio and we have 214 shares in our tfsa total value of eight thousand dollars up 12%, which is pretty solid. And once again, this is about 16 months of investing inside this portfolio, and it represents about 29% of my portfolio, and it's done quite well for us. So VDY is a really simple way to buy an ETF that contains a big basket of Canadian funds, and it's a very simple way, very low fees, and it's a good way for just beginners to kind of get started with investing. Moving on up here, we have one of my favorite stocks called TD. So TD is Toronto Dominion Bank. It's one of the biggest banks in Canada, and actually I should rephrase that. It's actually one of the biggest banks in North America. America. Um, over the past year, it's up 51%. So major recovery from TD um, over the past year. If you bought the stock anytime in 2020, um, you've probably done well with it. And over the past five years, even with the pandemic, it's averaging about 10% growth, give or take, um, over the past five years. So just really good growth, really good company. I know it's super boring because it's just a bank and it's fine finance based. Like there's not too much exciting about it, but it is a good quality stock. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys some big tips on what to look for when it comes to dividend stocks. And TD just holds it all. It's good appreciation. It's good dividend growth. And they've just been growing over time. So we have 31 shares inside of our portfolio uh, dollar value of two thousand five hundred fifty four dollars all-time performance is up four hundred dollars that's 19 percent um, from a good quality stock and like I get like I said most of this is coming from the growth from throughout the pandemic and it's just been doing really well VDY also holds TD as one of the bigger holdings as well. So we actually have a good chunk of TD, uh, but I'm actually okay with it because TD like literally is one of my favorite stocks. The next one we're going to talk about is Shaw. Shaw is a very interesting stock. Um, I don't hold many shares, but it's done quite a bit over the past year. It's up 55% because they got a major jump in price um, when Rogers basically announced that they're going to buy Shaw. I don't think it's gone through officially yet, but you guys can see over the past five years, Shaw has kind of basically suffered. And I wasn't investing in Shaw because I didn't like where the company was going but what you know and this just goes to show you that you can't predict what happens in the market so i don't try to be able to predict i just go by hey is a company growing if it's growing then it's good to invest into and shaw is just one of those company that kind of just this just happened you know the, the share price shot up like 50 percent for whatever reason and if you had it you did good and if you don't have it whatever i mean we were up um uh, i want to say about 46 percent we just pretty much luck if you ask me we have 11 shares which is about 400 dollars we don't have a lot of shares it's done well for me but i mean at the end of the day i'll keep the stock it's got a nice good monthly dividend and once again it is a stock that is held in vdy um but at the same time i figure i'd highlight it even though it's not a stock i'm really buying i'm just highlighting it because it's one of my best performing stocks um because of the fact that it shot up so much for whatever reason Going up here, we have some more I'm going to kind of mention here really quickly. So you have Severia Corp, which is one of the bigger companies inside my portfolio. It's up 14%. It's not big in the sense where it's super popular, but it is a healthcare-based uh, monthly dividend stock that has a lot of growth potential. They're really aggressively growing their, um, their dividend, and they're growing really well. So it's not a super common stock, um, but it's done pretty well for me. Same with Transalta Renewables, renewable-based um, energy company. A lot of people are saying renewable-based energy companies are the way of the future. Um, Transalta Renewables is one I bought back in the day it's got a monthly dividend yield this is another stock that just kind of has happened to do well for me over the past year or so i'm not investing aggressively into it because it is up 41 percent um but because there's i think there's some other options like maybe algonquin power and utilities might be one i might favor a little bit more because it's a little bit more consistent um, nonetheless i will kind of keep it in my portfolio and i probably will slowly buy into it over time but i'll probably focus on more some of those other energy-based companies um, as i've learned over time you want to look for stocks that kind of have you know, consistent growth, good payout ratios, and can kind of manage things if things don't, you know, if things kind of, sh if, you know, hits the fan kind of thing. So, uh, like, R&W is a good stock. It's done well, but I, I'm kind of moving towards more consistent stocks as time goes on. Here we up. We have our REITs, which is RealCan. Um, RealCan is a really, really popular REIT. It's one of the biggest REITs in um, Canada. We're up 12%. It's just simple real estate. Uh, I think real estate is really cool right now. Um, a lot of these REIT stocks got pushed down quite a bit in the past year. And as you guys know, real estate has just been doing its thing. It keeps increasing and growing. Um, if you go over the past five years, it's still down 
quite a bit since the pandemic, but we've seen crazy recovery as I predicted would happen. Um, up 33%. There's just no way these stocks are going to, these REITs are going to be down this much when real estate keeps booming and, you know, the stock market is recovering. Eventually, at some point in time, as long as the companies can sustain themselves, which I think REITs, the big REITs can, um, we should see growth. And we've seen that. Um, you know, real can, ninth monthly dividend really bumps up the dividend uh, performance of the portfolio, and that's at 12%. Next up, we have is one of my favorite companies called Manulife, another boring finance based company. I know, but they perform really well inside the portfolio, up 63% in the past year. Absolutely crazy. And over the past five years, up 34%. Again, the pandemic kind of pushed things up because we kind of lost a whole year of growth, but the recovery, if you've been investing, which you should be investing. Like if you're like me and you just invest on a regular basis, you don't care what happens with the market, you will eventually come on top if you're investing in quality companies and it just kind of goes to prove. Uh, we have 49 shares, total value of $1,300, up 19% all time. Again, just kind of reinvesting back into them and they have a very nice dividend yield up about 4%. So really solid, good company. And then going up here, we have some other stocks that have done pretty well. We have the Ambridge, um, we have Alimentation Couchard and then Algonquin Pound Utilities, which has been down quite a bit, but I think is also a really cool dividend stock that has potential to grow in the future. And here's a quick little recap of all the dividends we've been getting inside of our account over the past little while. Um, here's some from some of the big companies we got so far in April. April has been an absolutely amazing month for us. Um, I'll show you guys my spreadsheet here in just a second, but we've seen major dividend increases as we've just been plugging away at basically saving all the money I can. I'm cutting all my expenses to put as much money as I can in the stock market, as you guys have seen. And Algonquin Pound Utilities, um, paid us a dividend seven dollars. Vy pays us a dividend of thirty dollars. Real can eight dollars. You know, Sphere Corp a dollar, whatever. But H and R REIT seven dollars. VFE twenty one dollars. Tell us too. And you guys can see it just really adds up at the end of the day. And let's check out the spreadsheet so you guys can see how much money we've actually been earning inside the portfolio um, since we first started investing. And here's the spreadsheet of truth that I've been tracking inside this portfolio. As you guys know, I love this spreadsheet. I like showing it in all my videos because it just goes to show if you're a brand new beginner or if you're somebody who's just kind of getting started or maybe you've been doing this for a while and you kind of feel a little bit like, you know, what you're doing isn't really working out or it feels like you're taking a long time to get there. This is just to show you guys that if you be aggressive and you save up as much as you can, over time it will pay off. And you guys don't need to be as hardcore as me. I see a lot of people leave comments on my videos like, you know, me saying that, you know, I've really put a lot of money into the market and kind of, you know, they're, they're like, um, you know, how can regular people do this? Well, I'm here to tell you guys, if you guys manage your money, if you guys go focus mode like I do, you can do this. In fact, the reason why I have so much money to put into the market is because I'm not spending any of my money. I don't have a vehicle. I share, I, I rent a two bedroom apartment that I share with my girlfriend. I ha literally have a phone bill that's like 20 bucks a month. I have no expenses. So I'm putting all my money into the market. I'm doing as best as I can. I don't make a lot of money. I really don't. I make under 40 K a year. That's not a lot of money for a single person. Um, it's a good wage and I'm happy for it, but it's not crazy. So if you guys save your money, you can see results like I have here. So as you guys can see, the first couple months, even putting, I think we were putting about $400 into the market for like the first couple months. As you guys can see, the dividends kept growing uh, and then they kept getting bigger and bigger till we hit $50 a month. And after 12 months of investing, we hit $50 a month. I know it doesn't seem like much, but when you reinvest the money and it keeps growing over time, it really does start to add up. And then in April, we're already at $78 so far this month, $70 last month. We might hit $100 for the first time on a monthly income from our dividend stocks this month. I'm um, going towards the end of the month. And if that happens, I'm going to be super happy. I'm going to have to do some type of um, celebration video because $100 a month, I think is super cool for dividends. And if you guys see, we can see the total dividends added up together is $500 in dividends. Um, pretty crazy. I, I'm super happy. I love the growth of the portfolio and I love these dividend stocks. And um, before we end the video here, let's I'm gonna give you guys some quick tips on what to look for when you're buying good quality Canadian dividend stocks. So when it comes to picking good quality dividend stocks that are going to guarantee that you're going to get earnings and grow your income over time, like I basically have, and you don't have to worry too much about it. You can just feel comfortable with putting your money into the market. Here's are the things that I want you guys to look for. And here are the things you should look for whenever you're assessing a stock, especially if you want that consistent growth over time. So the first thing I look for is a company, and I'm gonna be using TD as an example here because um, they're my favorite company and they're just a good representation of everything. You want a company that is growing over time. If you see a company as having consistent growth, consistent stock appreciation, even if it is a dividend stock, I'm here to tell you guys, even dividend stocks can grow and have good appreciation if you invest into good quality companies. Stock like TD has tremendous good stock appreciation over time. So don't think that stock growth or stock appreciation only comes from growth stocks. It can actually come from dividend stocks as well if you invest in the right type of stocks. The next thing I want to look at is the dividend yield. Now, obviously the dividend yield is important. 
Um, and you want stocks that are already paying a decent dividend yield. Now, depending on where you are at in your investing journey, if you want more income, you might want to pick one with a higher yield, but you can pick stocks with a lower yield. The biggest thing that I think personally, especially if you want to get good growth over the long term, is to invest into companies that are aggressively growing their dividends. So if you look at a stock like TD, they've had a dividend growth of around, I think it was about eight to nine percent per year. Really good growth. You want to look at companies that um, not only already have an established dividend, but ones that are growing them aggressively so that over time, your money grows faster and when you buy that stock today if, if, if that dividend is growing like at a very very fast rate 10 years from now you're going to get that, that nice dividend growth and you won't have to pay any extra money and as you reinvest those dividends and that stock just keeps growing you can get some really good value here so dividend growth investing combined with stock appreciation are probably some of the most effective things that you can look at when it comes to assessing dividend stocks and my third basic tip for all you guys who are looking to buy some good quality uh, dividend stocks is look for companies that have high earnings and low payout ratios and can sustain their dividends. This is such an important thing for the long term. A lot of people look for companies with the highest yields or they look for the hottest companies not realizing that uh, you know high payout ratios, high debt, you know not being able to pay off their finances, not being able to grow the dividend because remember if we want to focus on companies that are growing their dividend all the time you also want to make companies pick companies that basically have the wiggle room so if a pandemic happens if you know they have a crappy year or two you know they're not going to be like oh no we have no money we can't raise our dividend this year you know you want to have companies that are going to be able to consistently raise their dividend because they just you know their earnings are growing over time and they just have really nice payout ratios i t like to look for like the 20 to 40 percent range but you know if a stock has a 50 to 60 or 70 percent payout ratio that's fine as long as they're growing overall and depending on what industry it is but you want to look for companies that have good financials low payout ratios um, so that they can sustain that growth and keep growing their business over time. All right, guys, that's it for the, today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we talked a lot about, but I hope you guys found some good value from this video. I know it's really beginner focused, but I really like to make these videos for beginners because I think beginners amongst, you know, are the investors that really need this kind of stuff the most. So if you guys enjoy these videos, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you guys want to follow along so with me, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really uh, helps me out a lot. And I really appreciate the amazing support that you guys have given me. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I try to answer them as best as I can. I do get a lot of comments, so I try my best, but uh, uh, I will try my best to get to them if you guys do leave a comment. So anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll see you guys later and have yourself a good week.